we think internships are important in MTU, so much so in the School of Business where Catherine and myself are located. Um, we have embedded a internship program in each of our nine business programs. So each student um, is um, give, is provided with an opportunity to go on a 15-week industry placement or internship. Um, they go to a variety of industries and um, they, they go into discipline-specific roles. The three key stakeholders involved in internships are, of course, the student, the academic supervisor and the industry partner. So internships are, are important. Catherine and myself are the internship managers on the Business Information Systems Program, uh, also known as the BIS program. Um, BIS is a hybrid program, so a 50-50 mix of business and technology modules. So BIS students would be considered the translators between the computer nerds and the business people. Okay, so a skill set that's in, in very high demand. Um, they go on placement in the second semester of their penultimate year, so typically year three, um, and they go into um, fully paid internship roles. They're not making the coffee, they're not doing the photocopying, they're entering what we would consider graduate level uh, entry roles. It's a very competitive process. So students are competing, of course, with others in their class for these placement positions. They are uh, competing with other programs, students at other programs. They're competing with students in a similar course um, in a neighboring university. So, you know, it's, it's competitive. I mentioned they're in fully paid roles. A lot of them are in multinationals. You might recognize some of the employers that, that we work with. So they go in January uh, for 15 weeks. Um, most of the time the, the contract is extended uh, up until they return to us in September. Industry have really engaged um, with the internship program in Ireland. Um, because, of course, um, it's used to manage the talent pipeline. So a lot of the interns end up um, going back to the employer into graduate roles on graduation. So they go on a full semester, uh, a, a full 30 credit um, uh, for, for the placement, and students actually receive a grade for their placement. OK, um, in some universities, um, they operate a different system, so students either pass or fail the placement. Well, that's not the way we operate. We actually um, assign a grade to the student. The whole process is managed by lectures. Again, this differs between universities. Some are managed by central careers office, but in MTU, um, they're managed by the lecturers themselves. The entire process from preparing the students in the first place right through to supervising the students while they're in placement. So four, uh, four pieces of assessment. So I said that we're involved in preparing the students. I mentioned it's a really competitive process. So part of the assessment um, we assign um, is, is we get students to submit a CV and questions that they would um, give to common interview questions. We also get some feedback from the employer that has a 50% weighting. Um, we ask students to uh, give an action plan of how they're going to improve on, on placement, and we also ask them to, to reflect. So I'm going to pass you over to Catherine. She's going to talk to you about some of the innovative approaches that we have been using to uh, manage our internships. So how many of you have sat at the end of the semester in formal meetings around coffee and said, well, that didn't work? The students didn't turn up, the students didn't submit this, or other such givings out. In the presentation yesterday from the lady from the University of Crete, 
she said she asked us a question. She said, at any point, do you think it might be anything to do with you? Which is awful because we're excellent lecturers. It couldn't possibly be anything to do with us. So we have done the same each year and thought, why isn't this working? Why aren't they coming to us? And we really had to stop and think about what we were doing. We also had the advantage of having somebody externally who we invited to come in and conduct research, asking the students and the employers, while we sat there, what they thought were the challenges, what was going wrong, and they also got to offer solutions. I will tell you now, that is a painful meeting to sit through where you think what you have been doing is excellent. Actually, they did not love everything we were doing. I can see the horror on your faces. So if you have problems with student engagement, have you had problems with getting students to reflect and develop those critical thinking skills? Have you got challenges around large groups of students and giving them all of that good stuff we've heard about, feeding forward, giving them the chance to improve, that all takes a lot of work. So our talk today is really looking at how we manage some of those challenges. It's like a case study for how we manage those. Um, let me talk first about the engagement, what we did with that, and the reflecting, and then Denise is going to talk about feedback. So Denise mentioned our students are BIS students, and here's a question that we've he heard other places. Do you know what you're going to be when you finish your college degree? So if you do accounting, you're going to be an accountant. If you do agriculture in our college, you're going to be a farmer. If you do BIS, you're going to get a good job, but you have no idea what it's going to be. It changes a lot. So when they start their degree, the jobs they're going to go into do not yet exist. So we can't tell them, they can't see it, and they don't understand it. So at Christmas, when their aunts and uncles say to them, what is it you're doing in college again? What are you going to be? They say, oh, I'm, I'm not really too sure. And that was, we felt that was part of our problem. So we worked with our student engagement office, and we looked at a coaching approach, because coaching is very much part of the college philosophy, to build a vision for the students so they had something to work towards. So our first intervention, and again, we got funding from the various units within the college, our first intervention was getting the fourth years to talk to the third years. So not somebody old telling them what a great career it is, not their lecturers telling them what a great career it is, not some expert from industry, the fourth years. And they listened to the fourth years much more than they listened to us. So those fourth years came in and they were thrilled to be invited and they posted it on their LinkedIn profiles and the students got to see what's ahead. We asked graduates who were out a couple of years, not too far away, who were also now employing the BIS students on internships to come and talk to the students. And again, we got that vision setting for the students. We looked at how our students were performing in interviews and as Denise said, it's a competitive process. So the head of computer science is also in the room. So it's also competitive with the computer science students. It's competitive with the other college. So we needed our students to up their game because they were, they had the degree, they had the, 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 the modules, they had the skill set, but they were not winning at interviews. And that's key for them at placement, but it's really key for them at graduation. Remember, they're coming to college to get a job. We've got to help them with that. So some of our students wouldn't have somebody at home who was going to coach them and we looked to the literature and we wanted them to be able to see what an interview looks like. Like how many of us have had the privilege of being a, a fly on the wall in an interview? So we had actors come in, they role played a video, uh, role played an interview. The students critiqued and said, no, you should have answered that better. No, that wasn't a great answer. And then the students got to offer what would be a great answer here. They got mini interview sessions being coached in a group. And then we did a lot of this empowering, I can do this interview. Here are some questions I can answer. Let's be big and strong about this. It was all about building their confidence because we knew they had the skill set. We followed that 
with a speed interview night. So the people that you see, the two at the table, they're the employers and they're interviewing a student. So the student comes in, they get a 10 minute interview and then they get 10 minutes on feedback on their interview and their CV. And when they come out, I can tell you they are buzzing, buzzing. So they're dressed up, they come in in the evening. If they want, they can go back in for another round. And what you'll notice also is in, in this intervention and in the other intervention, it happens not in a classroom like this. It happens on the flat. It happens when we're sitting, chatting. There's time as they're moving in and out, and that helps develop the relationship with myself and Denise so we can have that kind of interaction with them. That's less about a power distance and much more bring us closer. This next intervention was the most popular intervention we did. We did not see this, but they loved it. So we invited the fourth years to come at Friday and lunchtime, you know when they are never available, to come and meet the third years in the canteen. There was tea and coffee and some sandwiches. They were too busy because you know the way you might say, look, one o'clock, could you come to the canteen and talk to the third years? They were there at 10 to one, sitting at the tables, waiting for the third years. And then we rang a bell after 10 minutes, students moved to the next table, they found out about another company, about another role. And then you can see just in the pictures here, the little badges, and they're the different funding initiatives that the teaching and learning and student engagement office roll out, and that supported that particular intervention. So that was our engagement piece about how we got to know the students better and got them coming to things. Um, the next part was the reflecting. This is my particular interest area. And I'll tell you first where we were with reflecting. We assigned marks to it when they were on placement, but in reality, it was a set of logs. They wrote down at the end of the week everything they'd done. Sometimes they copied and pasted that from week to week because they said, well, I'm, I'm doing the same thing every week, Catherine. I don't know what else you want me to say. And then we had 15 of those. And that's what we marked. We changed that and we said no more logs, no more describing what you're doing. You write something each week that aligns with the learning outcomes. Yeah, it didn't really work. So we went back and looked again. And we looked at some of the literature around how we were preparing and supporting them, not just in the semester, but also before that. How much earlier in the program were we doing it? Not. We also looked at rubrics to try and guide them so that they could see where they were going. Our early, our, early, our early understanding was that they were looking to write a correct answer. They thought there was a specific answer we were looking for because that's the way it often works for them. And we knew that we needed to give them feedback to scaffold what they were doing. So we put those pieces in place. What we also looked at was these books. I don't know if you have them at home, but there is an increase in journals, uh, journaling. And these are two examples, one from students where student nurses, where reflection is much more mature. And then there's another one, the employability journal. And they are pre-printed with a whole set of prompts in place questions to guide you, things to think about, inspiring quotes. So we said we'd invent our own. And we would look at doing it all on Canvas for our learning management system. So each week, the student gets a key question. The question is aligned with the learning outcomes. So the learning outcomes for the module are about teamwork, they're about leadership, they're about innovation, they're about problem solving. And so in your first week, it's build the vision. What do you want to get out of your placement? Stop and think. What do you want to be at the end of your placement? And the most of them talk about confidence. They want to be more confident and be assured of where they're going. We build in some content. So in the week four reflection, they watch a short video on leadership, but it's very clear they are not to write a summary of the short video. They have to answer the question, which is, who do you see that's a great leader? And not somebody like, not somebody so far away from them, like Elon Musk, or not a, a super tech rock star, somebody they're dealing with every day in their placement. What are the leadership skills they're seeing? 
And do they have some of those leadership skills themselves? Do they see that they could be a leader? So we aligned with some of that content, growth mindset. We also looked at some open weeks. So in week five, you have the option to write about something I found challenging this week, something I'm proud of, um, something where I'm using my college skills. And then towards the end of the reflections, we asked them to talk about their employability. So what skills do I now have at the end of my placement that I didn't have before? Have I updated my LinkedIn profile? And we share with them the government report, a short piece, that says these are the skills that the country is looking for. You've got them. So that's what we have done with our reflective piece to yourself. Thank you. Um, so we've heard from a few wonderful speakers this week about feedback and the importance of feedback in the classroom. Feedback, of course, is just as and equally as important when the students um, go on placement. So again, we look to the literature to see ways we could improve the feedback process that students were receiving um, from the parties involved in, in placement. The industry supervisor plays a really important role um, in the placement process, not only because they're contributing to the final grade, but because of the mentorship and, and support and encouragement and feedback that they're providing. And the literature says that uh, feedback, when it's coming from multiple sources, and particularly when those sources are trusted and when they're authentic, they can actually really positively impact the behaviour of the student. And they can um, increase their, their self-awareness. We've also heard about uh, from other speakers about feedback and the importance of timeliness of feedback because feedback, if it comes too late, well then students don't have a, an opportunity to adjust their behaviour. So important that feedback is timely and it gives the opportunity of students to adjust, correct, I'm going to do something, try something different in order to improve. So the way we manage this is um, at the midpoint of the placement, we asked our industry supervisors to complete a, a, what, what we call an interim feedback form. And you'll see this on the screenshot here, this is an example of um, a, um, a, the, the form which asks the supervisor to give feedback to the students um, on how they were performing in terms of written communications. So one of the learning outcomes of the module is written communications. So at this midpoint, the student will see where they're landing in terms of grading. And you can see the scale here from unsatisfactory through to exemplary. And some space also so that the um, supervisor can provide the, um, the, the feedback to support the grade. So the students has an idea of you know, how they're doing, how they're performing, and also, of course, ways that they can improve. So the, the student gets the feedback at the, at the midpoint. And we didn't want students just to get the feedback and do nothing with it. OK, so we, we needed students to engage with the feedback to adjust their behavior so that they could improve. So what we get the, the, the students to do after that meeting and, and the meeting, of course, it, the, the form that the, the employer completes, it doesn't contribute to the grade. It's really just, um, I suppose, a prompt to start that conversation about formal feedback. So the student takes that feedback and we ask them to develop what we call an action plan. And the action plan will outline how the student is going to use the feedback to improve on, on the learning outcomes for the remainder of their placement. We start by asking students to self-assess and a desired graduate skill is that students have a good understanding of what quality work looks like. OK, so by engaging with this action plan and completing this assessment, they're developing their evaluative judgment skills and they're assessing their, their they have the ability to assess their own work because they know what quality looks like. 
This is an example of uh, an action plan and just one of the learning outcomes where the student is asked to grade themselves, so to self-assess how they're performing in terms of verbal communications. Okay, so again, they use the same scaling as the um, industry supervisor, so from unsatisfactory through to exemplary. This particular student has rated themselves as satisfactory, and we asked them to explain why they're assigning themselves this grade. Okay, so this particular student feels very nervous delivering to their team, they stumble over words, they just feel unprepared. So we asked them then to set a target proficiency and I suppose to describe what that target looks like. So this again particular student wants to become more concise and clear, uh, deliver at the right level and tone with, in, in relation to their verbal communications. And most importantly, we ask them to outline four to five smart actions, so specific, measurable, actionable, time-bound actions that they can use in order to reach their target proficiency. So again, some examples might be to take a communications masterclass, to read some uh, books on, on verbal communications, ask the supervisor to set a date for them to present to their team. So it's more likely if they're writing down their, their actions, they're actually going to, to deliver on those actions. I mentioned earlier that um, the internship managers and MTU are involved in the entire process. So from preparing the student right through to supervising the student uh, while they're on placement. And the first assessment we get them to do is we get them to submit their CV and the answers that they would use to common interview questions. Okay, and of course, this is this assessment format would be very unfamiliar to uh, to the student because, as Catherine mentioned, a lot of them may not have had developed a previous C CV or their only interview might have been for the part time job. Okay, so it's hard for them to you know, determine, well, what does quality look like? What, what, um, what am I expected uh, to do for, for this assignment? Catherine mentioned rubrics earlier, and rubrics are a really good way of telling the student what's expected of them for an assignment. But we have also looked and, in, and introduced exemplars to show the students what is expected and show the students what quality looks like instead of just telling them. And of course, it's not just the grade here for the assignment is, um, um, is, is high stake. The, the quality is high stakes because if they don't have a quality CV and they don't have the quality answers, well, then they're not going to get the, the interview. They're not going to get the job. So we've introduced um, peer to peer feedback and we've also introduced um, exemplars uh, for CV and interview performance. So again, you see some images here. So what we got the students to do, we got them to submit um, anonymized CVs. We posted them in the classroom. We gave out some post-it notes and we asked the other students to give feedback on, on their CVs. OK, um, so you can see here some of the um, feedback on the post-it notes and um, this is really beneficial for, for the student because of course they're learning by receiving the feedback in the first place but they're also probably learning even more by providing the feedback. And exemplars as I mentioned they show students what's, they show students what's expected of them. They show students um, what quality looks like. So um, exemplars, um, easy enough to do for the CV because it's, it's printed, it's written, but how do we develop uh, interview um, exemplars? How, as Catherine mentioned earlier, how can we give the opportunity for a student to be a fly in the wall um, for, um, to observe um, an interview? 
And Catherine spoke about one of the initiatives where we brought in actors into, into the classroom and, and students engaged um, very well with that, with that workshop. Um, these are images from our most recent project where we um, worked collaboratively with students. We recruited students to become actors for a day. Um, we, we scripted the, the answers and we recorded the answers that, that they're given. The idea is that we show in the classroom the large group, uh, we show these videos and each student gets an opportunity to, to critique each video. So we recruited four actors, we asked each of them five interview questions, as I said they were scripted, um, and we had great fun with the, with the recording. I have a video to um, show you one of the one of the answers. Um, the, the, the way we manage the, the video is we we slice the video by answer. OK, so um, and, and we play back then by by showing each answer and getting students to critique. So before I show the, the, you the example, I'm going to get you to do an activity because I can see you're nearly nodding off at this stage. <laughs> um, I'm going to get you to work in pairs for this or, or just turn to the person beside you or behind you. And I'm going to get one of you to act as the interviewer and the other to act as the interviewee. Okay? They're not moving yet, Denise. No. <laughs> They're going to move. They're just waiting on the further instructions. <laughs> um, okay. You're going to get one minute to answer the question. Already? Can you pair up or? Everyone got someone to pair up with? Maybe, or maybe they just don't, just, oh, don't understand me. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to tell you the question once you're ready. Catherine is going to set the timer. You right? Yeah, and you're going to answer the question. Tell me about yourself. You've got one minute. I don't think everything is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I should say that the interviewer typically doesn't interrupt while the person is talking. It's not a two-way. <laughs> so you talk for a minute. <laughs> I laugh. Okay, time's up. How does that feel? Anyone want to volunteer? How did you get on? Is it okay? Yeah? So far, it's far. Like, yeah. Mm hmm. You're expected. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't talk about my hobbies because that's not what we have in this question. But yep. it's so hard to start because those first few words that you say about yourself. Yep, absolutely. So it's basically who are you? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, and you don't want to, to ramble off telling them about hobbies or things they may not be interested in. Maybe they are actually interested in knowing what hobbies you are because if you want to go for coffee with this intern you want to find some common ground so you know it's hard to know what the employer wants yeah but it, it's difficult when you're put on the spot isn't it you know you're yeah yeah, yeah. okay so 
as I said, um, we, this is one of the most common interview questions. So we tell students, you are going to be asked to tell the employer about yourself. Okay. So um, as I said, um, we recorded some videos and the, the, one of the questions we got them to answer was, tell me about yourself. The answers were scripted. Okay, um, so we'll just take a look at one of the one of the question one of the answers to the tell me about yourself question. No, Sharon, really lovely to meet you. Welcome. And um, Sharon, I'm just going to start by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, so my name is Sharon Hogan. Um, I'm currently studying BIS in MTU. I'm in third year. Um, I love playing basketball and I love hanging out with my friends. And kind of my CV kind of covers the rest about me. Great. Um, would you take us through the CV? Tell us a little bit more. Um, yeah, so my CV starts off there saying that um, I go to Loretto Secondary School. I went there um, in Formoy and um, it also says the part-time jobs that I had up until this point. And yeah, a few of my modules there as well as mentioned and uh, my few of my grades as well that I thought were pretty okay. And would you like to say a little bit more about the modules? Yeah, so I did a couple of coding modules there throughout the two years. Um, sorry, I can't remember the names of them right now. Um, but yeah, and I did pretty well in them. I passed as well there, so happy I got my credits for a few of them. Yeah, good, yeah. good. It's what do the students think, but I'm sure you have thoughts on it as well. Hello, Dara. Welcome. Really nice to meet you. Thank you. Dara, we're just going to start off by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, my name is Dara O'Leary and I'm in my third year doing Business Information Systems in MTU in Cork. I enjoy Business Information Systems because it's a mix of both business and technology. I definitely enjoy the practical aspect behind my more technical modules. Um, I also work part-time as a sales assistant in Don Stores in Bishopstown. And I would describe myself as hardworking, dependable, and a good team player. And given the opportunity, I would definitely like to add value to train my growth as an employee. Lovely. Thank you very much. Hello, Harry. Welcome. Really lovely to meet you. Thank you. Harry, we're just going to start by asking you to tell us a bit about yourself. Sure. So my name is Harry Buskridge. I'm from Cork, I do BIS at MTU and I'm a first class honours student. In BIS I do modules such as business process design, systems development and accounting um, and I've enjoyed all of them. In my spare time then I enjoy going on walks and participating in MTU swimming team. Hello Aoife, welcome, really lovely to meet you, good to have you here today. Aoife, could you just start by telling us a bit about yourself? Yeah. So my name is Aoife Hart, I am a second class honours student in Business Information Systems in MTU in Cork, I am currently in my third year. Um, BIS is a blend of both business and technology subjects. Uh, we do modules such as business process design, systems development, information governance and Microsoft Office. Um, I am a part of the MG Badminton team. I am also one of the head class representatives for the IS Year 3. I balanced all of these as well as my part time role as a student leader in MG. Okay. I should point out that this is not a different language, it's the Cork accent. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the, the, you can clearly see the difference. There's some really good answers. There's some uh, very poor answers. The good answers are not meant to be perfect because the students will get an opportunity to critique and see, well, how can we improve? So exemplars are both, both the good and the bad. OK, um, so, you know, students were really engaged with um, with this project and we are really looking forward to rolling it out um, in, in September. 
So I suppose that's one of the ways that we have digitized um, the, the part of the process. So we'd be able to reuse these videos in, in, in the years to come. Just some, I suppose, quickly, just some other ways we have um, digitized the, the process. We use productivity tools like MS Forms, MS Bookings and Teams, and we use our learning management software, Canvas, uh, to manage the process. So some um, images here on the screen, we use MS Bookings to manage the um, meeting bookings between the student and between the employer. Um, we set up our time slots and, and they book in and a Teams meeting automatically uh, created. Um, we use MS Forms for receiving that interim grade from, uh, from the employer and also the, of course, the final grading sheet. We use our, uh, our learning management system for managing the job application process. So we post job descriptions. If students are interested in applying for the job, they upload their CV. Okay, and, and that makes it much easier to, to collect CVs. But more importantly, it allows us to track which students are engaging. So we use the analytics, Canvas analytics, to determine, well, how many, stu how many students have applied for this role? How many roles have a, has an individual student applied for? And I suppose most importantly, we can track who's not engaging with the process. And students will, in, will not engage for a number of different reasons. Some of them might be, you know, they, they really can't be bothered or they're just not interested. Others may just not have the confidence and feel, I'll wait until the others get started first and then I'll, 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 um, I'll start applying. But it, what it means is that we can intervene if we feel that you know, a student isn't engaging and we can go to them and ask them, well, you know, is there an issue or what, what can we help you with? So I'm going to pass you back to Catherine and she, she's going to talk to you about some of the teaching and learning supports um, that are provided. Thanks, Denise. So um, as Denise said, I work part time with the teaching and learning unit um, and their role is around supporting innovation across the university in teaching and learning practices. I'm also delighted to say I have with me today. Linda from the picture is at the back of the room, Linda from the teaching and learning unit, my colleague, my other colleague Roisin is at the back of the room. Maurice in the other picture is not here, um, but she is responsible for both units, the teaching and learning unit and the student engagement office. I'm also making a small mention here of some of the funding that we've received from the government through different methods that support the activities in the teaching and learning space. Um, Hold tough now because we have a big slide coming up, but don't be scared. So these are some of the programmes that we roll out within the Teaching and Learning Unit and the Student Engagement Office. I can't go through them all, but Roisin and Linda will be available for chats afterwards. I'm stripping this one out and leaving the ones that myself and Denise have engaged in. So I'm going to pick out a couple just that are worthy of mention that have been significant. One is MTU's um, award a, a bronze certification with the European Mentoring and Coaching Counselling and the rollout of introductory foundation coaching level courses for staff across the university and that has helped us with that coaching approach particularly with those students who are perhaps not engaging. I'm also mentioning the masters within uh, in teaching and learning in higher education that's rolled out in the university and we've both taken modules on that to inform what we're doing. We're also, Denise has taken a digital badge in Universal Design for Learning. And again, that has informed how we're rolling out our materials and how we're designing our materials. We've received a number of POTS, I'm calling them POTS funds from government funding in terms of funding the, those kind of student engagement initiatives. And we have a learning community across the whole of the university for all of the work placement managers. Um, and then finally, we have um, two annual seminar series and we get to share our learnings and our experiences on those as well as be part of another group where we're all together on the one page all thinking about how we do we redesign, redesign our assessment and feedback accepting it doesn't always work the first time the other 
um, particular piece I'm pointing out is we have a new research laboratory and that is looking at assessment, feedback and student engagement um, within our teaching and learning unit. And we have a particular focus on one project at the moment on placement. So across the university, we have over 2000 students go on placement. So it is one of the most significant pieces of learning that the students get and the amount of credits that the students are earning. So again, out of a four year program for our students, it's a 30 credit module. Um, at the moment, we have 300 student responses, 100 organizations have responded, and we're in the middle of analyzing that as well as the focus groups. We're at the end, one last piece. For us, as part of the culture within the university, placement offers what is quoted as an unrivaled opportunity for learning. And that's how we see it. Something we can't deliver within the college, but the students find it so, so valuable and it is a different type of learning. Denise and I are passionate about that. If people want to come and talk to us about that, we will spend all day talking to you. In the spirit of Ingenium, for the connect, share, learn. We've been delighted to be part of your sharing over the last number of days. We hope that this evening, tonight, tomorrow, you'll talk to myself, Denise, Roisin and Linda um, about these projects. And perhaps we might see you in Cork next year. Thank you very much. <laughs>